My name is Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and a math advisor for Texas Instruments. And this video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at the topic of particle motion along a coordinate line using the TI-84 graphing calculator. As an example, we'll look at the free response question number two from the 2021 released APAB exam. In this question, we're given two particles, P and Q, moving along the x-axis. The initial position of particle P at time zero is five. It has a given velocity function shown here for the interval of time from zero to pi. Particle Q has an initial position of 10 at time zero, a different velocity function over that same interval from zero to pi. In part A, we're asked to find the positions of these two particles, P and Q, at time t equal one. Let's take a look at this using the TI-84 graphing calculator. First, we're going to change our mode from function to parametric. So we'll go down here, change that to parametric. So having made that mode change to parametric, we'll return to the calculator. Now we're going to take a strategy of not just calculating positions at time t equal 1, but going ahead and creating position functions for P and Q. For x1 of t, I'll put in the initial position of 5 for point P. And then we'll add on the integral representing the change in position over time. That's going to be the integral from 0 to t. And we'll need to integrate the velocity function for particle p here. Now that was the sine of t to the 1.5 power. So we'll just enter that. And you'll notice I'm using t as both as my variable of integration and then the upper limit of integration. Uh, that's maybe not the best symbolic practice, but uh, the, it does not confuse the calculator. Since we're moving along the x-axis, I made y1 equal to 0. And now I'm going through and doing the same thing for particle q, setting up a position function by putting in its initial position, 10. And then we're going to integrate from 0 to t the velocity function of particle q. And that velocity function was the quantity t minus 1.8 times 1.25 raised to the t power. So that we'll integrate that. That's going to give us the change in position up to time t for particle q. And again, since it's moving along the x-axis, let's make y2 t equal to zero. Now with these position functions set up, to find the positions of the particles p and q at time t equal one, we can just retrieve them by going to the y equals menu, the parametric, and we'll get x1 t evaluated at one, and there's the position of particle p at time t equal one, 5.370 or 5.371 if we rounded. For particle q, Similarly, we go back, retrieve our parametric y variables, and there's x2 of t. We'll evaluate it at t equals 1, and we'll get the position of particle q at that time is 8.564. Okay, we've answered part A. Let's look at part B. In this part of the question, we're asked if the particles p and q are moving toward each other or away from each other at time t equal 1. Now, that's a question that we'll definitely need to explain our reasoning on. Now, we set up these parametric functions so we could actually visualize the movement of the particles. So I'm going to go into the window settings, and let's see, our t interval was 0 to pi, so I've set that up. I'm going to go ahead and set the t step to 0.1. And now let's get a window. Let's see, our initial positions were 5 and 10. Okay, let's try negative 1 to 11 and see if that will work for visualizing the particle motion along the x-axis. Now, it doesn't much matter what our y min and y max is, but let's set that to negative 1 and 1. And now we'll take a look at the graphs. And it's a little bit hard to see because it's right on the x-axis. That blue path is the path of particle P. And this red path is the path of particle Q. Now because it's right on the x-axis, I'm going to actually go back into my y equals menu and lift up 
the graphs just a little bit. So I'm going to make y1t 0 0.05 and the same for y2t. Now what's that going to do? It's still going to give us that horizontal movement, but it'll be just a little tad above the x-axis so we can better see it. Ah, now I really get a better view of how those things are moving. Okay, so there's our paths. The blue is path of part, particle P, and the red one's the path of particle Q. If we turn on the trace, we can actually see a readout at the exposition and time. You can see we're moving up to t equal 1. And as we continue to advance, oh, we see, oh, actually this particle now is looks like it has gotten as far right as it can go and it's turned around and is moving to the left now. And we've got just there a little past pi. Now let me back up our time readout to time zero. And let's look at the path of particle q. Okay, now it's moving to the left and it gets to uh, just a little bit above 8 before it also turns around and starts heading to the right. Now if you recall, we were being asked what happens at time t equal 1. We certainly got the sense that they were moving toward each other, but we want to look at that more precisely in, in terms of our explanation. So I'm going back to the calculator screen. I'm going to evaluate the velocity of particle p at that time. We have its position already shown there on the calculator screen. So I'm going to evaluate the sine of t to the 1.5 for t equal 1. And this is our velocity for particle p. So it's at 5.370, and it, the positive velocity tells us it's moving to the right. Now let's evaluate the velocity of particle q at that same time. So I'm substituting 1 for t, so I've got 1 minus 1 1.8 times 1.25 to the first power. And that is going to evaluate to be negative 1. So given that particle q is to the right of p, moving to the left, while P is moving to the right, they're definitely moving toward each other. In part C, we're asked to find the acceleration of particle Q at time t equal 1, and whether the speed of particle Q is increasing or decreasing at that time. Now, to get the acceleration, we're going to need to differentiate the velocity. So I've gone to the math menu and picked up the derivative. We'll take the derivative with respect to t of the velocity function of particle Q. So that again was t minus 1.8, that quantity times 1.25 raised to the t power. And then we're going to evaluate that derivative at t equal 1. All right, let's see what we get. All right, we get a positive 1.0268. And since that acceleration is positive while the velocity is negative, that means the speed is decreasing. All right, now let's move on to part D. We're asked to find the total distance traveled by the particle P over the entire time interval from 0 to pi. So for this, we'll need to pick up the integral. But instead of integrating the velocity, we'll need to integrate the absolute value of the velocity, which will give us the speed. So I'm integrating from 0 to pi, and let me pull out the absolute value function. So we get our absolute value bars, and now I'll put in the velocity function within the absolute values of sine of t to the 1.5, and that's what we'll be integrating from 0 to pi. So I think we've got it all entered in there. We just need our variable of integration, t. And we're all set to evaluate. Okay, let's see what we get. It's calculating. And there's our total distance traveled. And that is actually both to the right and to the left. Remember that the particle turned around. Um, and so that gives us that total distance traveled by particle p of the time interval. Okay, well that winds up this video. 
For more resources like these, please go to education.ti.com.